Hello, this is Hakuta Bean, and today we are going to be reading some spooky stories from r slash paranormal. If you enjoy this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Well, let's get right into this. Oh yeah, I should probably let everyone know. A lot of my preferred subreddits are going to be going dark on June 12th to 14th in process of Reddit's API changes that will kill third-party apps. Access to these subreddits will be blocked for everyone during those dates. So that means I can't really make Reddit content on those dates. Anyway. That sounds really dumb. That sounds really funny. Let's see if there's anything new under the sleep paralysis tab. Sleep paralysis with the devil. But why are you sleeping with the devil? I get that might have been an in bad taste, but it was a little bit funny. <sighs> see, what else is there? Hmm. There's a lot of um, these ones about people who are made of shadows. I'm just gonna grab a whole bunch and then we'll start reading. We'll see if that's enough. <sighs> Just talked to my spouse after he came from home from work. Kiss too. Turns out he hasn't left work yet. I'm really freaked out right now. A few hours ago, my husband came home from work for the day. Earlier than usual, but today was train day, so I didn't think anything of it. There was nothing at all unusual about how he, he interacted. He says hello, comes over, and gives me a kiss. I ask about my day. I ask about his, and then he goes to the bathroom to change, etc. Then he went to start playing the new Diablo game. I'm so sick of that to that game. Anyway, I went to a different room and was scrolling social media for a while, and noticed how quiet it was, I called for him. Babe, no answer. Say so another time, and no response. I think maybe he fell asleep in his beanbag, so I got a check on him, and he's not there. TV is off. Weird, he usually tells me if he's going to work in the garage or out in the yard. Not out back, not in any other rooms, not in the garage, not in the front yard. I notice when I look out front that his workman is gone. Now I'm really confused. Did he really just leave the house without giving, giving me a kiss? Never in all these years has that happened. Well, instantly I call his phone and he goes to voicemail. He texts right back and asks if I'm okay. I'm okay? Babe, where did you go? He mentions and says that he can't talk at a moment because he's still in CPR training. I ask him why I didn't say goodbye and then he asks me what I'm talking about because he kissed me this morning when he left. Something he hasn't left work for today yet. Okay, now I'm losing my mind. I'm like, I had a whole last conversation with you. A hug, you went pee. What do you mean you haven't been home? So he says I have to be confused or something because it definitely wasn't him and no one set off his ring alert. I'm 43 and have never hallucinated in my life. My husband and I have been friends together for over 7 years. It is not in his nature to do something like this as a prank. 
especially because we used to have a problem with the spirit of some sort when we moved in, into our home. We didn't have lucky because at first, it was just a little funny mischief. Then we get more obvious that there was an entity of some sort causing things to happen in the house. It, was it did progress to me being touched in my sleep. Mirror at first and then... When I first ended more aggressive, like getting on my foot. I got so scared that I was, I was looking in local paranormal groups to help with getting rid of the spirit. My husband sort of shrugged off the touching part. He thought, uh, uh, imagination or dream, etc. Until I grabbed and yanked his foot out from under the covers and he flipped. We were scheduled for a complete home renovation last February as part of a TV show. After the renovations before the reveal, the station had a chaplet and come and bless our home for us. We had mentioned Loki to them and after we moved back home, we never had an encounter with Loki again. I was supposed to be getting stage spirit, but we have been so thankful that we've had no issues for the last 15 months. Have you ever heard of a person's friend or family being a person like that? If so, why would they do that? It was a whole dang clone of my husband. I'm at a loss. Thing is, you act like they were cloned or whatever, but this just seems like a time problem. Oh. A Vortiger? I don't think I said that right. I'm gonna open this link and learn. Vardavai, or Vardigar, is a spirit and predecessor in Scandinavia in Oak Lore. So I simply include in Cesar the deja vu in substance, but in reverse. For a spirit with a subject's footsteps, scent, or appearance, an overall demeanor possesses a system in a location or activity. Resulting winds is a leaping they've, heard, they've seen or heard act of person before a person physically arrives. This bears several difference from a doppelganger, with a less sinister annotation. Hmm. Oh, that was interesting. <sighs> My uh, uncle saw someone who was already dead for a few hours. I'm guessing that's supposed to be you. Whoops. So in other words, this one for the particular night. It was a while back. I think I was about 10 years old. My uncle got home from his friend's wedding at 2 a.m. and went to sleep right away. In the morning, my grandma, his mother, told him about her friend passing away the day before, the day of the wedding, but in the morning. When my uncle heard this, he just stood in shock because he swears he saw her sitting on a bench but, and he was walking his way home from the wedding around 1.30 a.m. He was very confused about seeing her at that particular time. It was an old lady, but he did not question her. He went to his way there and she just stared at him and smiled for a moment. How is it possible when she already passed away in the morning? I even asked her if he didn't drink too much, but his answer was no. Do you guys have any similar experiences or explanation? I think this one is, uh, takes the cakes. This one takes the cake. Twin? <laughs> I think that's it. You know what, that's the best explanation. This is going to sound really dumb. Dang, that's just me all the time. So, I'm not sure what to even call this as I tend to look for the logical explanation first, but this has me stumped. I'm currently house or cat saying for a friend who had, got, who had to go out of town for a family emergency. She asks me as I often spend time at her place and her cat is comfortable with me. When she told me it was going to be a few days, I packed a bag. It wasn't much, just a change of clothes and toiletries that include my toothbrush and bottle of Listerine mouthwash. On the night I arrived, I put all, all my stuff away. A toothbrush and a mouthwash I put on top of the bathroom and cabinet out of reach of her cat. Before I went to bed, I remember using the mouthwash. 
Force went to the cab, knocked it back, and put the cap back on, and put the bottle ba back atop the cabinet. I rinsed, turned all the lights off in place, made sure the cat was okay, and went to bed. Next morning, I wake up up at 8 a.m. to feed the cat, and as I'm walking past the bathroom, I noticed the list readers was for the top of the cabinet. The first thought was that the cat may have left up during the night, and looked off, but scanning the bathroom floor, revealed this not to be the case. I searched around the house thinking if we had randomly really placed it somewhere else without realizing it, but no. Well, it's completely disappeared into the aether. I'm going home tomorrow. I'm thinking about not telling my friend about this. I'm going to say, hey, I've lost an almost full bottle of mouthwash in your home. I spoke to a mutual friend of ours about it, and she said that she had always found this house to be creepy on one occasion. Her and her, our friend heard a voice outside, so my question is, is this. If ghosts are real, do they do this kind of thing? If so, where the heck would it stash a bottle of mouthwash? I think that anyone who's seen any horror movie ever would tell you that yes, ghosts do this sort of thing all the time. It's like a common thing. <sighs> I my house I think is slightly haunted. My family and I have lived here for 12 years now, but it's been mostly me and my mom that I've had strange things happen, mostly over the course of a, of a few years. But I'm kind of spooked. I'm a few, I believe we're in the paranormal. It's not been the first time we've heard phantom voices or smells in this house. Phantom voices, dang. I know I've heard some voices sometimes. Anyway, so we're just saying it was years ago, me and her were in the kitchen, and we both smelled women's perfume. The woman just appeared and then disappeared. We were both stunned. And two, literally just now, I was coming downstairs and I swear to God I heard a woman's and cackle or laugh because as I came downstairs, I expected my mom to be watching this funny video or something on her laptop and I asked her, "What's tickling you?" I heard you laugh. She replied, "Nope, I'm on eBay." And my jaw all just dropped. I was like, "No way! Are you sure you didn't laugh for good?" Because I legit heard someone laugh as I was coming downstairs. Ooh, another story. When my husband and I were living in a previous apartment, I was at the computer one day. All of a sudden, I smelled something. It's perfume. It smells like it's from the apartment below us. Thing is, the woman who lived in that apartment had moved out a while before. Also, there was no woman in the hallway of the floor where that apartment was on. So I'm still puzzled as to what this might have been. I guess ghosts just really wear way too much perfume, huh? Oh, this one's fun. Sleep paralysis with the devil. I suffer from sleep paralysis pretty often, but this one was definitely one of the freakiest. One of my earliest experiences of sleep paralysis had me drift in and out of sleep e e paralysis and dreaming. I think my sleep paralysis shifted to a, into a lucid dream. I dreamt I was in a pitch black room as if we were in space with no stars but a solid an equally pitch black so floor. I was with this extremely beautiful man. Maybe the beautiful, the most beautiful man I had ever seen or will see. We were sitting and having a long conversation. After a pleasant chat, he tells me that his name is Lucifer, and is often misunderstood. He asked me to help him. That's not right for him to be where he is. They too beautiful to be here. Too perfect. At this point in my dream, I knew this character was the devil, or at least my mind's view of the devil. I'm not religious. He told me everything would be better if he was allowed out, so I brought him back with me. And if I would do him that favor, he would always have his guiding hand above me. That I would never have to face a struggle again. That I would never know what it's like to feel sadness. He sent his hand out for me to take. I don't know why, but I saw he sent my hand out to take it. Just before we could uh, link our hands, I heard this blood curling scream, no. And I immediately woke up and still hearing the telling of that no, with the uh, usual unbelievably buzzing and vibrating hanging I get after experiencing sleep paralysis. And as I woke up, I heard three knocks. 
knock, knock, knock. Nobody was at my door. I know it's just a mixture of sleep paralysis and endless dreaming, but it felt so real. Hmm. I take Devil's Hand regardless of the screamed no. In fact, I take it in spite! Frick you screaming at me! Anyway. Experience a ghost. As the house suggests, I only wit- It is a Ouija board session. I didn't play with it or want to, I was too scared. I was in 5th grade, making me 10 years old, and it was a rainy day at my school, so my class had to play indoors. My classmates were impressionable troublemakers, not me. I was a quiet kid who got bullied and ostracized by them. There was this one troublemaker kid who annoyed my te teacher the most. His name was James. She sort of deserved that, though. That teacher was a bitch. Let's say rainy day, we had the whole day off, basically, because our teacher was in the middle of a divorce and could give two craps about teaching ten-year-olds. So we sat around all day. A board playing board games with James had the idea of creating a Ouija board from paper. Hmm. And all my classmates got excited and began making one. My a classmates teased me for, for being scared of it. They were pretty loud about the whole Ouija board thing, and I looked over to my teacher to put stop to this, and she was just typing furiously on a computer, ignoring us. So my classmates started playing with it, using an empty a plastic cup as a guide under. Give her a Ouija board. I'm really getting sick of birds flying past my window. They were asking dumb questions, laughing out loud. I was scared, but forgot about it. That same night, on the other day, I was sitting in my parents' bedroom watching Kirby Gusman's videos when I saw a woman. The woman had black holes where her eyes could have been. She had a Victorian nightgown on. Her hair was just under her shoulders, and her feet were... Uh, Almost like blurred gray. I got scared and started seeing her as she we was playing backwards and she disappeared into my brother's bedroom. It was night. I've never seen the ghost once. Huh. <sighs> shadow man with a fedora. Oh no, the shadow man is a neck beard. I had gone out to dinner with my husband. It was winter time, so it gets dark early. We had left the kitchen light on. We arrived home as I walked into the back room, which leads to the kitchen. I saw Shadow Man walk through the kitchen and disappeared. This happened about 20 years ago and still bothers me to this day. I did not hallucinate and I'm perfectly sane. I've read that people see a Shadow Man when they wake up in the night and can't move. I was awake. I did not know whether to get priests to come to my house or just forget about it. I think it's just best to just forget about it. What do y'all think? Okay, so I was around six. I remember always talking to this older guy. I remember walking toward dad's house with my mother and something I building to say to this old man. So I don't remember now, but I remember he would teach me some things. My mom caught me playing pay here with him. So finally my mom asked me who I was talking to. And why did I... I stopped to say hi to nothing. I told her I was saying hi to my friend. She asked me how does this friend look, so I described him. He was black, had dreadlocks, and had the Jamaican flag color be it's in his hair. My mother, my mom was silent. She took me to her dad's and told me to describe him again to my grandma, so I did it once again. She started bursting out crying. She told me that that's exactly how my grandpa looks. I stopped seeing him after that day. In my life when I was younger, I had never seen any pictures of him. I still remember him to this day. Oh. That's actually a little bit painful. Anyway, let's go to this one for now. I spent my life taking care of my kids, and they have all grown up. I am not yet a grandfather, but hope to be at some point. When I pass, I can think of nothing I would rather do in the afterlife than look over and protect those I love or the offspring to come. Beautiful. Hmm. 
That's a long one. This is going to be fun, isn't it? I was wondering what or if there was there are any paranormal peculiar things and entities that live in 80s, 80k. I will include a story if anyone could give me feedback on it. It would would be appreciated. Thanks in advance. Context. I'm a student boarding in Lake in Placid, and I've often been running trails in the forest alone. I've had some strange experiences. I've had companies with cafeteria worker or any aces of that Bigfoot sightings. Sorry, as I mentioned earlier, I would run trails. I would always go alone. I always felt a weird presence or like feeling every time I walked into the woods. So every day, I would run up this trail, Cobble Hill of funny locals, and go around a lake, Mirror Lake, then return back to school. It usually took me 40 minutes or so. Earlier in the day, I felt more comfortable on the trails, but it's such a weird feeling once the sun starts to set. It's like the golden hour where you can see the light glistening through the tree branches. Regardless when this would happen, it's like my gut gave me that feeling right before something bad happened. Usually I get this during the time I'm on the trail, but significantly worsened when the sun was setting. It was like something or someone was watching as well. I'm not sure if that's how to explain it, but it's like that feeling when someone is staring at your back. You know they are, but you can't really see them. Additionally, I would typically have earbuds or headphones and blasting music. I would constantly reassure myself that it's just me and I bumped the volume up to pump me up. I also also shouted verbal phrases, some were motivation as I was trying to do cardio. And the others were like, go away, or I don't want to deal with this, etc. Since I had this strange feeling, I often would shout those things, things are similar. Or to I, I suppose scare it, or maybe make me not afraid because I heard of some stuff being off of fear. So if I was fearless, then it wouldn't bother me. Yeah, I'm not sure. I remember sometimes I either thought, or maybe my water my breath, to bring it on, etc. Again, probably to be my, in my, uh, and another to challenge whatever I thought was there. I also have heard sticks or leaves crunch behind me. However, this could be. This could be in just as be me sipping on a branch and it moving further back or, or wildlife, but still, I would always look behind me. I always thought something was there. Granted, maybe this is the insane part of me, but I was found laughing that it was funny and it just ran faster. As I'm moving, I felt scared. I would hear something, maybe a bird or a chipmunk. That would freak me out, so I would always have to keep moving. This time was different. I stopped to grab a drink of water and I heard and I swear I heard my teacher yelling along the lines of Hey what's up OP and wait up like the voice was so similar to what my teacher sounded like. It came from where I came from on the trail and knew that I was the only one on the trail. Not many people do it. Your teacher was either at home or at the school, so I knew it couldn't be, so I booked it. Constantly looking back and texting my friends about what happened. Like I was genuinely scared. I've thought about it over and over and can't wrap my head around it. I know it sounds absolutely crazy, but it felt so real. I was by myself and couldn't record or the quote, or so it's my word against everything, but it was so strange. If anyone has any idea of what it could be and proper steps, that'd be amazing. Another thing, my eyes were watering like crazy timing this. As soon as I stopped, it went away. Could be explained, but I feel worrisome. Thanks. Nobody has an explanation. That is unfortunate. <sighs> Possible paranormal activity in new house part two. Well, I'm back. Last night I had some activity which I will list. It started with the smell, all feeling being watched, which grew and grew until I felt like I was going to throw up. This started to end me. What do you mean requests failed? Hang on. Huh, that was weird. Anyway, this frightened me, so I turned my lights on. But it also made me curious, so I turned on my EMF of detector.
There wasn't a hit, but I recorded the detector as an EVP, and as soon as I asked and he first started the room, my phone completely crashed. My phone had full charge, so I know it wasn't that. The feeling of being watched only grew worse. What do you guys believe is happening? Thank you so much for the kind comments on my last post. Oh yeah, I think I just remembered I, I had a dream in um, sometime yesterday where my phone actually ran out of battery. Or was that real? I can't remember. Anyway. I think that's enough scary stories for today. I'm arguing those chills. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I do not know what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. So until then, goodbye!